show that they centered the world. He didn't like the center thing. Good afternoon, folks. My name is Chris Jones, and I am a servant of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you, give me, give me a little thought here. Let's say that I was a doctor, and I was a really smart doctor, and I had done all the studies and the research, and I had found the cure to cancer. Let's say I did that, but I didn't tell anybody about that cure. People die from cancer every day. Let's say I had the cure and I don't share that with anybody. What kind of a hateful person would I be if I did that? That I had the cure, the answer that could solve millions of people's problems, give them life, and I held it back because it was my secret, it was my discovery, and I didn't want to share that with anybody. I would be a terrible, terrible person if I did that. Well, my friends, in that same context, I'm up here, and my friends and I are out here because we have the most amazing news. We have the cure to the disease that has plagued everybody who has ever lived. And we're not going to keep it to ourselves because we want everybody to live and be saved. The disease that everybody has is sin, my friends. And the cure is God himself. Specifically, the cure is God in the form of Jesus Christ, who died on the cross, was resurrected for our sins. So let me read you a, a, a small passage from the book of Hebrews about this Jesus Christ. If you brought your Bibles, please turn to Hebrews chapter 3. He, Jesus, was faithful to him who appointed him, as Moses was in all his house. For he had been counted worthy of more glory than Moses, by just so much as the builder of the house has more honor than the house. For every house is built by someone, but the builder of all things is God. Now Moses was faithful in all his house as a servant, for a testimony of those things were to be spoken later. But Christ was faithful as a son over his house, whose house we are if we hold fast our confidence and boast of our hope firm until the end. Therefore, just as the Holy Spirit says, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as when they provoked me as in the day of trial in the wilderness, where your fathers tried me by testing me and saw my works for 40 years. Therefore, I was angry with this generation and said, they will all go astray in their heart, and they did not know my ways. And I, sw I swore in my wrath that they shall not enter my rest. My friends, you wonder, why is the guy up here reading from the Bible? Isn't that some old book? It doesn't have any meaning, does it? It's not relevant today. Folks, this is why the Bible is relevant today, and this is why I read from it. For the Word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword, and piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit, of both joints and marrow, and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. My friends, the Word of God is what's going to judge us. The Word of God is God. Jesus is the Word. And it's going to judge us one day, just like it says there. Now you may think, well, what standard am I going to be judged by? I'm not sure I believe you, but let's say I want to listen to you. What standard am I going to be judged by? Well, the standard we're gonna, going to be judged by is perfection. So that means if any of us have ever done anything wrong in our lives, unless you're perfect, you will be judged by God. Well, I don't know about you, I'm not perfect. Nobody's perfect. In fact, the Word of God says, no one does good, no not one. We have all fallen short of God's standard. And that may seem like bad news to you, but if you hang out for a few minutes, I'll tell you what the good news is that makes the bad news not seem so terrible anymore. But my friends, I'm out here not to make myself look good. I'm out here 
to lift up the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is God in the flesh. He is a risen Savior. He died on the cross to take the punishment that you and I deserve for our violations of God's law. Every time that you've ever told one lie, every time that you've ever stolen anything, any time that you've ever dishonored your mother and your father, any time that you have ever taken God's name and used it in a low way, like in a curse word, if you've ever said, oh my, and used God's name, if you've ever used Jesus' name and just thrown it around as if it was nothing, these are things that God hates. These are sins against a holy and righteous God. If you've ever, you've ever coveted things that you don't that don't belong to you. If, you, if you ever thought, you know, I really need that one thing, or wow, if I win the lottery, wow, life will be so much better. When we do, when we covet, when we want things that we don't have, that's telling God, you know, I'm not satisfied with what you provided for me, God. I want more. How insulting is that to God? My friends, how many times have you made an idol and worshipped it instead of God? Now, you may not have cut down a tree, carved out a little idol, put it up on your mantle, and, and bowed down to it and worship. But how many times have you said, well, the God I believe in would never send somebody to hell. The God I believe in is love. My God would this, my God would that. If you've ever done those things or had those thoughts, well, I've got bad news for you. You're in violation of the second commandment. Thou shalt not make a graven image because you have made a God in your mind to suit yourself. You're right. Your God would never do those things because your God doesn't exist. My friends, if you've ever had a hateful thought unjustly in your mind, the God who gave you life sees that on the same level as murder. Sure, we know murdering physically somebody is a bad thing. It's terrible. But God, in God's eyes, all you have to do is have a hateful thought. God sees that on the same level as murder. If you've ever had a lustful thought in your mind, if you've ever had pornography in your mind towards somebody who you are not married to, the God of the Bible, Jesus himself says, that's the same thing as adultery. How many times today have you looked at somebody and had a lustful thought? Try to count how many times today, this weekend, this, this month, this year, and just think how many times you have broken God's laws. How angry God must be at you. My friends, everything I've talked about so far, I'm just as guilty. I have done all those things, probably worse. But perhaps I know something that you don't know yet. My friends, what I know is that even though I have sinned against God just like you have, I have realized who God is. I have humbled myself. I have turned from my sins, and I have put my trust in the risen Savior, Jesus Christ. And it's because I've done that that my sins have been forgiven. The Bible says that when you repent of your sins and put your trust in Christ, He separates you from your sins as far as the east is from the west. Now, we can look at a globe and we can see, well, there's a north pole, there's a, there's a south pole, you can't go any farther north than the North Pole. You can't go any farther south than the South Pole. But east and west, there is no end. No matter which way you go, east or west, you're never going to get there. God says he'll separate your sins as far as the east is from the west. He will take your guilty conscience and he will cleanse it. Folks, do you go through life and do you, do you feel guilt when you do things wrong? Because we all do things wrong. We all have a conscience. We know right from wrong. No one can claim ignorance of, of doing things that they didn't know was wrong. Even as a little child, we don't have to teach a child to say no, to be disobedient. They know that instinctively. It's because it's in our nature to sin, folks. That is what we are by nature. We are sinful. But my friends, God loved you so much that he died for you. God took the punishment that you deserve when he died on that cross 2,000 years ago. God should punish you for your sins. God should punish you for your lying, for your stealing, for your adultery, for your lustful thoughts. But 
God poured out his anger and his wrath on his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. Instead, Jesus Christ loved you enough to die on the cross for you. But he didn't stay dead, my friends. Three days later, he rose again, forever defeating death. And when he did that, he proved for all time that he is God, just as he claimed to be when he lived on this earth. My friends, that is why that if you put your trust in him alone, you will be saved. You have to take your pride and you have to get rid of it, my friends. God, the Bible says God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. My friends, if you were on an airplane and the plane was about to go down and they gave you a parachute, would you just believe in that parachute? No, you'd put on that parachute, you'd strap it on tight as if your life depended upon it. My friends, that is what the Bible says you should react towards Jesus, to put on the Lord Jesus Christ, to hold tightly to him, because he's going to save you from the wrath to come. He's going to save you from what you deserve. Folks, do you want to know how much God hates sin? Look to the cross. Do you want to know how much God loves you? Look to the cross. My friends, you all know the Bible verse. You've heard it probably since you were a kid, but maybe you've never really thought about it before. The Bible verse is John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever should believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Folks, right in that verse, it's very clear. If you don't believe in him, you will perish. Folks, hell is a terrible place. Everlasting darkness. Weeping and gnashing of teeth. Folks, e eternal conscious torment. That's what hell is. And it's a right place because we have sinned against a holy and infinite God. You may think, but but I, I told lies. That's not that big a deal, is it? Well, here, maybe this will help you out a little bit. It, it helped me out. If I lie to a little kid, I'm not going to get in trouble. I'm an adult. They're a kid. Nothing's going to happen to me at all. It would be wrong for me to lie to a child, but nothing's going to happen to me. If I lie to my wife, I'll probably be sleeping on the couch that night. If I lie to my employer, I might get fired from my job. If I lie to the government, I could go to jail for treason. So my friends, it's the same thing. Lie, 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 lie. But the punishment got more severe as we went through. Why is that? It's because of whom the crime was committed against. My friends, we may think lying is not a big deal. But it's a serious crime to God. He says lying lips are an abomination. The Bible says that all liars will have their part in a lake of fire. Lying is a serious crime in God's eyes. And that's why even for telling one lie, God can righteously send you to hell. There's a couple in the Bible, they told one lie. God struck them dead because he disobeyed. They disobeyed. My friends, every day, over 150,000 people will die today. You don't know when your last day on this earth will be. You could live a long life. You could live until the ripe old age of 100. And you could also just as easily cross Atlantic Avenue over there and get hit by a car and die. I don't want that to happen to you, but you don't know when your last day on this earth is going to be. Some of you, if you're not local, you may not know this, but last year, two different hotels, people fell off the balcony and died. One, peop one person, it was one of these hotels down here, nothing against the hotels, it was the person who did it, their family was inside. The next thing they know, their loved one went over the balcony and died. That's a terrible thing, my friends. That person did not get up that morning and think, you know, today's going to be my last day on this earth. He didn't think that. You don't know when you're going to die. So it makes sense for you to make sure that you take care of this before you die. Make sure that you get right with God now, while you still can, while you can come to Him willingly. My friends, you may think you've not done that many bad things, but let's, let's say I took a little computer chip and I put it behind your ear and for an entire week we recorded every thought that goes through your mind. And then we come back up here and I put a big old tarp on the side of that hotel and we flash up there your thought life. 
everything that went on in your mind for an entire week, we put up there for everybody to see. How would you feel if everybody you loved and knew saw what went on in your mind for just one week? Would it, would it, would it scare you? Would it make you want to run away in fear that they knew what went on in your mind? My friends, the God of the Bible, the God who gave you life, knows not just what happened in the last week. He knows every thought you've ever had. All the things that you've done in darkness that you thought nobody knew, God knows. Because He is all-knowing. He knows. And that's why He's keeping account of everybody, my friends. And when you die one day, you're not going to be able to say, but God, but God, I didn't know that it was wrong to lie. I didn't know that it was wrong to steal. You can't claim ignorance because he gave you a conscience. You know right from wrong. But the Bible says that most people suppress that truth because they want to live their own lives. They want to live how they want to live. And they don't want to bend the knee to anybody. And that pride is going to bring most people to their death and it's going to send most people to hell. The Bible says that wide is the road that leads to destruction and many will find it. Narrow is the way that leads to life, and few will find it. Most people are on that wide road, because most people want to live their lives. They don't want anybody to tell them anything. They're the captain of their ship. They're the number one priority in their lives. My friends, I beg of you, get off that wide road that leads to destruction, and find the narrow road that leads to life. Humble yourself. See yourself the way God sees you, as someone who has broken his laws repeatedly, just like I have. See yourself in need of a Savior. Folks, you, you're not going to be able to claim, but, but God, I did a lot of good things in my life. Shouldn't that count for something? That doesn't work, even in a court of law. You can't go to the court system in downtown Virginia Beach and say, you know, Judge, yeah, I know I murdered that woman. I feel really bad about it, Judge. I haven't murdered anybody else since then. You know, Judge, and I give a lot of money to charity, Judge. You know, Judge, every time there's a blood drive, I donate blood. You know, Judge, I've done a lot of good. I think you should just let me go. What do you say, Judge? What's that Judge going to say to you? He's going to say, what are you, insane? I don't care how much good you've done. You murdered an innocent woman, and you must be punished. If he didn't do that, he would be a corrupt judge, and they should throw him off the bench. So, folks, professing and, and your supposed good works won't help you in a court of law. It won't help you when we stand before God. It doesn't matter how much good you think you've done, because the Bible says all of our righteous deeds are like filthy rags, because they're done with selfish motives. My friends, you can't do anything to save yourself. That's the whole point. Jesus Christ did it all. The Bible says, for by grace we have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, so that nobody can boast. Folks, if I could get to heaven based on anything that I did, then the sacrifice of Christ on the cross would have been pointless. He has to get all the credit because he is the one who died for us. He is the one who died for you. So the question is, when you die, who's going to pay for your crimes? Are you going to appropriate the sacrifice of Jesus Christ before you die and let his blood cover you? Or are you going to take that punishment upon yourself and spend eternity in hell? My friends, the faces that I'm seeing out here, I'll probably never see you again in my life. But I care about you enough to get up here, to look like a fool, to tell you about Jesus Christ, about who God is, and the fact that he loved you enough to die for you. Do you know anybody who would love you enough to die for you? How about this? Do you know anybody who you have rebelled against through your entire life that they, they would then turn around and die for you? We live as rebellion to God. That's what... The Bible says that we are at war with God in our mind because of our wicked works. You may think, that people say, oh, but everybody's a child of God. No, you're a child of God through adoption when Jesus, when, when you accept what Christ did for you, when you surrender yourself to God. Until then, you are a child of wrath. You are under God's scope. He's going to get everybody, there's no doubt. We like it when we watch the news and we see when the bad guys get it, when we see criminals who have been caught. Everybody likes it when the criminals get caught. Well, folks, when you die, God's going to get all the criminals. And that includes everybody here. If you've ever broken any of God's laws, he sees you as a criminal. But he can see you through the righteousness of his son, Jesus Christ, if you bow the knee to him now 
while there's still time. You don't know how much time you're going to have on this earth. Hopefully you can hear the pleading in my voice that I'm trying to get across to you guys. It's because I care. I don't want anybody to die in their sins. I want people to get to heaven. But I can't get you there. Only Jesus Christ can get you there. You have to turn from your sins. You have to put your trust in Christ alone. He will save you. But you've got to shed your pride. You have to trust in Him alone. Jesus was very clear when He said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. Nobody comes to the Father but through me. Folks, when He said that, that was a very bold statement. He's, by definition, what He said was, I am the way, which means everybody else is wrong. If you put your trust in anything other than the shed blood of Jesus Christ, as found in the, in the Bible, my friends, then you have misplaced your trust. If you put your trust in religions that are not based on Jesus Christ, or that do not rightly define who Jesus Christ is, there's a lot of religions out there who claim, oh yeah, we believe in Jesus, but if you ask them just a few questions, you'll find out very quickly that the Jesus that they claim to believe in is not the, the Jesus Christ as described in the scriptures. Folks, make sure that you have the right Jesus. Make sure that your sins are forgiven. Today is the day of salvation. Don't harden your heart. Turn to Christ and live. He wants to save you. Turn to Christ and live. Turn from your sins. Folks, if you have any questions about anything you've heard, I'll be over here. I'd love to talk to you. If you don't have a Bible, I'd be glad to give you one. I want nothing more, I would love, want nothing more than to put the Word of God in your hands. Don't refuse a Bible, don't refuse a Gospel tract because of pride. If you, if you, if you claim to be open-minded, then be open-minded. Read the Bible. If you're in any of these hotels here, odds are, in your nightstand, there's a Bible. Now, if you're in your nightstand, if you're in a Marriott, you might have the Book of Mormon in there. I suggest you throw that book away because it is not the Word of God. Mormonism is not Christianity. And I'll spend a moment talking about that because right now, in this, in this country, we're going to have an election soon. It looks like it's going to be the incumbent president, Obama, against Mitt Romney. Mitt Romney claims to be a Christian. He is not a Christian. Mormonism is not Christianity. I say that not to be self-righteous, not to, be, to try to anger anybody, but I want to make sure that everybody gets saved. And if you put your trust and, the, and, the, and the, the Mormons, they believe in a different Jesus. And folks, if you don't have the right Jesus, you don't have the Father. So please, look at yourself in the light of God's law. Look at yourself the way God sees you. Realize that just like myself, you have broken God's laws and that you deserve punishment. You deserve hell. But God loved you enough to come down to this earth 2,000 years ago to take the punishment that you deserve to rise again three days later. If you put your trust in Him and turn from your sins, He will save you. So please, turn from your sins. Trust in Christ. Repent and trust in Christ. Thank you for your time. Uh, Chris, let's, uh, let's pack up and move back down there.